the theory that I chose is cognitive theory, and this is based off Alfred Elder. Um, one of the other pioneers is Freud, but his view on behavior was that um, behavior was due to the unconscious. Um, Alfred believed that your current realities was what led to your um, behaviors. So um, cognitive theory views the behavior as a unified whole, so it's a holistic approach. Also, um, it believes that inaccurate perceptions um, are the result of inappropriate um, behavior. Um, and this believes, this theory believes that the acquire of new um, strategies and techniques can change your current realities, which will then change your behavior. And um, a role of a therapist in this, um, in this theory is that you act as a trusted teacher. So you use evidence-based practice. You're also, uh, you're, you advocate, you empower the client, and this leads to mutual respect. So in this relationship between the client and the um, therapist, there's a mutual respect. There's no power imbalance because one is the therapist, he knows more, um, he treats less the client. No, this is a collaboration between both, which is highly, highly important. And some homework that, or not homework, but strategies that the client and then the therapist can take part in is, um, the use of role playing. Role playing is very, um, it can be a very big benefit because it can challenge the current behavior or uh, reality, not behavior, more of the reality of the client. So let's say that the client has depression or they don't believe they're smart enough. With role playing, you can um, change the role of viewing this person as a smart person. So let's say they want, they want to change this uh, current reality of, oh, I'm not smart, to I'm really smart. So you role play this. How would a smart person feel? Like, how would you act? So, um, believing I'm a smart person, um, oh, I just got an A on this paper. So, just changing that whole current reality is very important in role playing. Also, um, another homework that we can say a client and a therapist can do is uh, the strategies that are talked to talked about during. Um, the session and the homework would be for the client to test these strategies while they while the next session. So let's say um, I have a I have a very negative mindset or I think all in once so I think very black and white like oh if I fail this test I'm not that smart. So um, a way of changing this is uh, through self talk um, views upon oneself. And or having a journal and writing views like when I walk out the house, how do I see myself? How um, when I take a quiz, what do I? How do I feel about myself? So writing these um, these thoughts or anything like that down, and then discussing it on the next session with the therapist. Um, also, uh, in the, in research findings of effectiveness of this theory, I found this uh, really interesting thing that said that cognitive behavioral therapy is the most research um, psychotherapeutic approach because each cognitive um, behavioral approach has specific techniques that can be tested for effectiveness. Um, cognitive behavioral therapy encourages the development of specific goals that are measurable and therefore can be researched. So how we were speaking about that, um, this is evidence-based practice, so you're going to make sure as a therapist that whatever you work with um, the client that it's backed up by evidence. So um, this is how you would find out if it's measurable or effective, such as let's say working with a young boy who has depression and he, and you know through doing your evidence-based practice or research that lifting weights um, among um, young boys who um, suffer depression, this actually helps them um, and makes uh, raises self-esteem, the outcomes, everything. So you want to make sure that you know that. Um, and seeing if it fits me, I, I like this uh, approach, uh, this theory, um, for many different reasons. And one is the fact that you're working with the now. So uh, the way that I am, I'm very focused on the now for the most part. So I like working with individuals that we can speak about what can we do right now or what can we do to change this whole thought. So let's say that a young youth, um, a, a youth believes that they can't get a job or they think that they're not going to graduate college. Um, I like to work with youth that um, we can challenge that. So um, doing homework, uh, increasing the chances of going to college, uh, getting this person more involved, uh, challenging these whole thoughts of where of you can be who you want to be. If you want to go to college, we can make that happen. But how are we going to do this? Changing just that whole perspective. I like that. 
Um, I also like the role playing, which I think is very, very, um, to me, I like that idea because you can put the person in that situation of how would I view myself if I were to be a confident person? How would I view myself if, um, if I really believe in myself? And I like the role playing. And in conclusion, I think cognitive theory should be used um, among many different uh health professionals, not just that, but as well as mentors, because you can work with people in really um, challenging these beliefs or most, well, for all of it, it's usually negative thoughts about oneself and just um, being able to work from that perspective of empowerment um, for the youth and really working to change that whole reality can make a huge difference to a, to a person.